G'day cocktail lovers, I hope you've been keeping well. I hope you're ready for another cocktail, specifically Milk Punch Monday! Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's a little editing note to myself, which I hope I remember. Anywho, we're doing Milk Punch Monday, and also looking at the calendar of drink days, this coincides with Daiquiri Day. And Daiquiri, excellent drink. I love simple drinks that are still amazingly tasty. Your, your basic daiquiri, you just, you know, white rum, lime juice, and sugar, and that's it, it's great. Uh, but I think we're gonna do something special for Milk Punch because when you milk clarify a drink, it does a couple of key things. One is it usually uh, filters the color of whatever you've made. Two is it really softens the flavors. So I like to recommend when you're making a milk punch, milk clarified cocktail, use some really bold flavors because they're going to be tamed down by the clarification process. And a standard daiquiri is a relatively light flavor. It's a beautiful, refreshing drink. I love a classic daiquiri. But there is, of course, the nuclear daiquiri. And I thought, yes, let's do something like that. Let's go big, let's go overproof, let's go strong flavors. So here's my recipe for a nuclear daiquiri. First up, the rum. Rather than being a white rum, I'm going to use a dark overproof rum. This is an Australian 75.9% uh, alcohol in a circles cask strength rum. And so this is the first ingredient I'm putting in. We're going to go with one ounce of overproof rum. Normally a nuclear daiquiri would still use white rum, but would be overproof. But because I'm doing the clarification process, I thought I'd use a dark rum and see what we get. But this goes in most nuclear daiquiri recipes, green chartreuse. It's 55% alcohol, so it's got a bit of kick, got a lot of strong herbal notes. Uh, it's a very nice drink. And uh, I'm going to add half an ounce or 15 mils of green chartreuse. Most nuclear daiquiri recipes say to add some falernum as well, which is a type of rum liqueur originally from Barbados. It has like island spices and lime flavors in there. It's very nice, brings in some different notes, but it's comparatively subtle. And as I say, when you clarify, you soften flavors. So why not go for something that kicks it up a notch? Instead of falernum, I'm going to do half an ounce or 15 mils of pimento dram, also known as allspice dram. This, uh, a little of this goes a long way. It's got very strong sort of cinnamon, spice, uh, and cloves, anise. It's why it's called allspice. And I'm going to add 15 mils, half an ounce of pimento dram. Now I'm going a bit out there to be really nuclear. I'm going to add some absinthe. This is my blue absinthe. This is actually 80% alcohol. So this is all just very dangerous levels of alcohol, essentially. Uh, and you normally wouldn't put this in a uh, nuclear daiquiri, but I'm thinking, eh, maybe it'll work. <laughs> this is an experiment. I have no idea what this is going to taste like. So I'm going to add half an ounce or 15 mils of absinthe. The final touch is some lime juice. I'm going to be adding half an ounce or 15 mils. Some recipes recommend a full ounce, 30 mils. It's down to your taste. I uh, like it just dialed back a little, and this is a very important part of the clarification process. You need some acidic content in your drink to make sure the milk curdles. So I'm adding 15 mils, half an ounce of lime juice. All that goes together to make a drink that is a very questionable and arguably unappealing color. But then what we do is add it to milk. And the ratio you want is four parts of your drink to one part milk. So for a single serve, I'd, I'd add it to about an ounce of milk. I made a bigger batch because I'm going through this whole clarification process. So I wanted a couple drinks out of it. But if you're just making a single one, I'd add it to about one ounce of milk. Uh, the milk will curdle almost straight away. Looks even worse. It looks abominably bad. I'll be honest. This looks really quite bad when it curdles, but uh, that's just part of the magic because then we pour that through a coffee filter, the curds will settle to the bottom and do some serious filtration. But the curds are what does the filtering, so the first stuff that goes through will actually be a bit cloudy. So you'll want to, after a minute or two, pour that back through uh, so it gets properly filtered, or even put the entire thing through 
more than once. This is going to take a while, you need to be patient. It can take half an hour to an hour to filter properly, but in the end, you get this amazing clear result. Hello, I'm in casual mode and it is much later uh, and I'm a bit pissed off, honestly. Just had a succession of things go wrong. The actual clarification went great. Up uh, from that gross color that you saw when I put it together, it came out this wonderful, brilliant green, mostly from the coloring from the blue absinthe. And I thought that looks great. I'll just put that in the fridge to chill and take it out when I'm ready to shoot the video. And uh, lessons learned. And actually, this is a lesson I should learn for anyone who's going to experiment with milk clarification. Sometimes, and I, it depends on what's in the drink, if you put it in the fridge, the drop in temperature appears to make like oils come out of solution. So what went in crystal clear will come out cloudy. Uh, and now what I have found often, uh, because this has happened to me before, uh, if you leave that at room temperature for a while, it goes back to being nice and clear and clarified. This one, and I think it's because of the absinthe, which is particularly prone to the looshing effect where it goes cloudy, it didn't really go clear. I mean, it still looks much better than it did before the clarification process, but it's a sort of cloudy green. But it's, it's, you know, it's not an unappealing color, but let's go, what does it taste like? It tastes like absinthe, uh, which is no mean feat considering there was uh, 151 proof rum in there. I mean, it's actually, it's nice, I like absinthe, but unless you're a mad keen absinthe fan and you wanna try this, uh, my suggestion would be even less absinthe, like maybe a bar spoon, maybe five mils. Increase either the rum or the green chartreuse quotient. I think absinthe lends a nice kick to it, but it's weird, even just that half an ounce of absinthe is pretty intense, along with all those other flavors, it's still quite intense. So, we learned something. Uh, probably don't put your clarified drinks in the fridge because they might go cloudy and ruin the whole effect. Uh, so just put them on ice when you actually serve them up would be my suggestion. And also, uh, absinthe is strong, who knew? Uh, now we all know. So I hope you learn something. I hope you come back to learn some more. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, it'd be great if you did. Hit the notification bell so you know when I upload. I'd love to have you along for the journey as we explore all sorts of wonderful cocktails. Who knows what will be next? I don't, I still have to decide. So uh, uh, in the meantime, I hope you look after yourself, look after the people around you, and until I do see you again, cheers.